here I am with some church planters. They decided that there needed to be a Seventh-day Adventist church right in the heart of Austin, Texas. There had been one that had moved out into the suburbs, but they had a passion to do something about it. And so um, seven years ago, they began meeting in homes and then about four years ago gathered together um, for this congregation that meets in a Lutheran church right across the campus from University of Texas at Austin. Tell me just a little bit about how you caught the vision to, to plant a church and what happened from there. Anybody? Well, there was no church close by. And Austin is a big growing city, huge city now, and we needed some representation for the Lord right here. And that's how our vision started, and the Lord blessed. I think it started with about 15 people at the beginning, and it has grown. About how many are coming now, each seven? Well, typically uh, 125 or so every week, sometimes quite a bit more, but usually that's pretty pretty standard, 125. Amen. And one thing I noticed today is that, that you folks are definitely the seasoned citizens in this group, <laughs> that practically all of the congregation is like, uh, it looked like in their 20s and 30s, Amen. but it took, it took some of you catching the vision and helping to to organize and get it going for them to take off and run with it. What else can you tell me about that experience? Yes, we, we just uh, make decision that we are going to start. Uh, it was very hard because, you know, with uh, only at the, the beginning with the German, Leticia, John, uh, Donna, and myself, we will say, okay, you teach Sabbath school next Sabbath, you preach, I do singing. <laughs> and the other one was the... Oh, uh, there was uh, Melba. She was our well, pianist. Yes, uh, <laughs> after, after work, she joined here. Yeah. And then after... After us, you know, we start, people start growing, and that's when the, we start to have 15 people more, and then we decided that we really need to find a place. So and that, that is, yeah. It became kind of a, a mysterious group until so some other people came to uh, see what was going on. Joseph was a leader in different church, and yes. they said that God had called them to help with this church. Wonderful. And, and, and they are working with the army group. Yes, army group. Army Bible camp. And that's how the youth and the children now get very involved with the uh, um, evangelism. That's uh, Joseph and Putri. Say something about working with the children and youth or army yes, Bible camp. So, um, I think um, Auntie Esther kind of covered that where my husband and I we caught the glimpse of that vision and we really wanted to work closely with the youth um, and, and not only that but it's close to campus and so there's definitely a lot of opportunities for more of the college, collegiate age however um, throughout our experience here we've not only um, worked with collegiate age but also the, the younger crowd which is the youth and um, and that's that's we, we definitely caught that vision and we're a part of Army Bible Camp, and the, the number one vision that we have is that we want to encourage the church to continue to pray, because without prayer, we would not be here. And so we need um, continuously to lean on God's strength to be able to help move forward. Amen, amen. You know, I noticed today when I was wandering around during Sabbath school class that there were actually nine different Sabbath school classes. And sometimes when a church plants, all I do is have maybe one Sabbath school and one worship service. But you realize the importance, and I saw you involved with a, a group around of young people meeting. And then I saw primaries, and I saw in this room, and I saw um, littler kids, and I saw a yeah, group from uh, Rwanda and Congo, and and I saw just all ages and several languages, and it was a wonderful thing. Now, I heard that there's some type of, uh, um, so you met in how many homes? Did you, just from house to house? About five or six. Five, five homes. Okay. Five homes, at least five. At least, okay. yeah, at least five. And then it grows. Now, was it a different home each Sabbath or different? Yeah, mostly. Okay, yeah. so you just yeah. kind of rotate it around. Yes, rotate. Okay. Did you have pastoral guidance with this or you just we, lay we leadership? A, yes, after we had been to a seminar in uh, San Antonio, the, we were assigned a young pastor as a mentor, and he didn't come every week, mm -hmm. but he 
kept us uh, motivated and uh, helped us quite a bit. He, he so, was actually the pastor of, I think, Fredericksburg. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And so he had quite a distance when he did come. Yeah. Sometimes he couldn't good. make it until the afternoon. So this is really a lay-led church plan with a pastor available yes. from time to time to help yes. coach. And you're meeting here in an English Lutheran church that's very old. It's very strategically located. And I've heard that it was kind of a miracle story to even get this. Say something about how you got this church. Well, from what we understand, when the uh, Lutheran members had their board meeting, or I should say the board met, there was a senior lady there that remembered when she was a child before this church was built in 1937, this was built, but she was, her mother or grandmother was a member of a Lutheran group. They were looking for a place to worship until they had a church. And the Adventist church in this area rented to them on Sunday so they could have a place to worship. When this request came to their board, they said, it's time for us to say thank you for that opportunity to rent from you. Now it's our turn to let you rent from us. Wow, you just got to know in heaven we're going to hear a whole lot of stories like this about a kindness returned through the generations. Well, what would you say to other people who are involved in churches right now and they're comfortable, um, but there needs to be more churches planted? What would you say to them to encourage them to be open to planting new churches? Pray. Pray. Yes. Pray. Yes. Pray. 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 And have to have some inspiring pastors encouraging the people to do this, such as yourself right now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. And, and even though it's it's work, it's the Lord's work. And yes, that's correct. And it's a blessed work. Amen. Amen. The Lord, Lord has blessed us so much. And whatever that we requested and pray to the Lord. He will not hesitate to give us. Like we have only one person that play piano, and then we call, please Lord, send some more people to play music, and they come people God sending us. And we call Lord. Weeks, we yeah. <laughs> Pray and God shows you the people. Yes. Yes. Amen, amen. The this most, most important thing was, we, uh, the, uh, Donna's, uh, daughter-in-law was assigned to take care of the children and she said we don't have too many children and then we said let's pray for children <laughs> that year five members got pregnant <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> think we okay <laughs> okay i think we may have a ministry that we need to encourage other places <laughs> thank I, I do agree yes. with um you know prayer for sure yeah. but even though sometimes we don't see god answering the prayers right away um, I think it takes uh, a lot of patience to to wait for God to answer. Mm -hmm. And so while praying, wait upon Him. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. This is wonderful.